Hello and welcome to the Repeating Podcast once again. My name is Ayush and we have a whole new panel on the podcast this evening. We have Sagar and Chaitanya who are our in-house finance bros. And for the first time ever, we have a new member on our podcast who is a guest and is an avid member in the markets and is quite a valuable addition to the conversation that we're going to have this evening. Uh, presenting Karthik Shankaran from Fiscal Fitness. So if you'd like to introduce yourself and give us a little bit about what you do. Hi, good evening, everyone. You know, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Uh, I run a small investment, uh, you know, personal finance advisory company called Fiscal Fitness. The idea is to just help people manage their money better. We end up using, you know, a basket of stocks, invest uh, mutual funds, uh, and you know, the, the wide range in between. So, yeah, thank you for having me on the show, and I look forward to the discussion on sector and thematic investing, which obviously has got very uh, interesting in the last few months. Absolutely. I think to kickstart this, uh, we'll start with the data point. I think I think that's what's been buzzing around, at least in the news deals, 6,000 crores. That's the amount of inflows that December 2023 saw into just thematic funds. And that I think the weightage that it took in terms of entire equity inflows into mutual funds was about 35 percent being amongst the highest that we've seen, at least in recent history. So thematic funds have really taken off as a concept, as a mode of investment, uh, owing to all the gravitas associated with investing in themes and the outperformance that it entails. So I think Sagar had written a little bit about this and why maybe we might be a little too late to the rat race of thematic investing. And we have that blog linked in the description with our feature at Ticker Tape. So I. Sagar, I think you can take it away and give us a little bit about this. Yeah, no, the data point was very interesting because uh, I think a lot of chatter was going on around at that time on the 50 lakh crore uh, mark that the mutual fund industry hit. Um, yeah. And 2023 has been a year of great inflows. Uh, but one of the striking things, as you said, was the inflow into thematic funds. And while December was at about uh, 35%, um, we see that Currently, out of the total uh, AUM in equity mutual funds, thematic funds constitute to about 12%. Um, so with 35% inflow in December, clearly you're seeing that um, the inflow is disproportionately larger and that 12% will keep increasing over a period of time. Um, this 12% was just about 8% pre-pandemic. So we've already seen thematic funds gain about 4 percentage points in terms of the composition of the total equity um, AUM. Uh, so very interesting times, uh, but but I think there are two, three factors to it that have resulted in this uh, very large inflow. Uh, one is, I think there is a popularity increasing for thematic funds globally, not just in India. Uh, so there was a study conducted by Morningstar, which uh, suggested that um, it's not just India, even Europe, US, uh, Australia, Japan, all across thematic investing is becoming uh, the sort of go-to. Um, and uh, second, also because uh, people are adopting it, the mutual fund industry or in general service providers have been adjusting to increasing the supply as well. Uh, so even in India, if you go to see the number of schemes launched in 2023, a majority of them were in uh, thematic. Um, and, and so I think it works both ways, right? Demand is there. Uh, the mutual fund industry is clearly catering to that demand uh, by providing more supply. And that's resulting in this massive, massive um, inflow mm -hmm. um but but have uh, i'd like to pass this on to karthik in terms of like have you seen in your experience with mm -hmm. your clientele uh, an increase from the client side in terms of uh, mm -hmm. investing thematic uh, as a demand uh, that hey i understand this theme um, and give me a product that suits this theme is that something you've witnessed lately no i think uh, <clears throat> there are a couple of things right which is driving this rise of thematic investing See, primarily um, you had diversified equity funds which by nature allowed a fund manager to go wherever he or she saw value uh, within it you know we broadly had two categories growth and value investing mm -hmm. what has happened i think now is the rise of direct stock investing right uh, you are seeing uh, you know brokers service providers create you know, baskets of stocks create, uh, you know, they're called baskets. Some of them call it with different names. 
but the ability to pick and choose and make something that you know either resonates with you say something like esg or i want to invest in companies that um the sector i work in so it's becoming simple today to pick and choose stocks that urge to now create personalized hyper personalized portfolios is leading to you know mutual fund companies also thinking of how do we cater to this demand uh, see eventually any um, equity return comes from the overall portfolio now uh, if i can pick five or seven say defense companies and create a defense theme um, so uh, you know my sense is it's it's a two way thing there is a popularity amongst uh, investors because i think the key thing which i guess we should you know put into context is themes generally uh, showcase higher returns for a shorter period of time you know a theme right. you know eventually tapers out and hence you know there is an ability to showcase to investors that you know particular stocks went up 40% in 6 months and this is a great theme but if you take a long run if you take 15 years 20 years uh, these themes you know generally tend to underperform a, a diversified fund because that's the nature of every market uh, themes get quickly you know identified arbitraged out and uh, you know you got to move on to the next theme so given that i don't think you know um, it's the amc's really at fault or the stock brokers that's fault it's just the way themes work they move relatively quick and hence you know you see a lot of return in that short period of time enticing more people to come in that's just a question yeah so if we sort of analyze the data within 2023 month wise in terms of the inflow so there is a direct correlation between how the market performance is and the inflow into equity funds that correlation is already established right. second if you dig down a little deeper you see that thematic funds get a larger share of the total aum or the inflow in months that the market is high so clearly i mean there is as you said a correlation between thematic funds perform fast and investors usually are drawn to that quick return are usually drawn to past performance despite those disclaimers uh, and sort of invest in that um, they don't want to miss the trail right there is a large amount of fomo act there is a large amount of evidence of stuff working out and that's when they invest so we did a little bit of data crunching and there was an interesting point that came out that on average whenever uh, the equity inflow is higher than average in that year the thematic inflow is roughly about 25% of the total equity inflow at that time <laughs> whenever equity inflow is lower than average thematic inflow is at about 8% of total inflow so there's a very large divergence in terms of when people are investing and people are typically investing yeah. only when the markets are up um, so they're drawn to the narrative they're drawn to that money they have that risk taking ability risk aversion goes down and and clearly that is also a factor which in 2022 2023 not 22 so much but 23 at least um looking at how the markets have performed that inflow is not surprising so while there is a structural uh, sort of drawing towards uh, thematic funds i think this year itself was also one of these where in general um, the markets were conducive for such a flow Right. Now, I'll just add to it. I think you also need to put into context the the regulatory space. See, given mutual funds are allowed to launch only one fund per category, it's only the sectoral and thematic where they can keep launching funds. So most of the AMCs who've been in business for you know let's say ten years have filled their product portfolios. So they all have a flexi cap, a multi cap, a large cap, and mid cap. Mm -hmm. So there is no room left. And you know, yeah. given people's uh, you know. they drawn more to new fund offers than buying something which has been there for 20 years um, there is a you know inherent uh, reason why you know more thematics will be launched and i think you know maybe if you've looked at the data but see, eventually i think a lot of them start becoming diversified funds and either subsume other themes into it or the fund manager is forced to issue you know paperwork to say listen we are broad basing our theme because when i launch i can probably you know very specifically go after a theme but eventually you know if that fund has a decent size aum it needs to uh, continue attracting flows so i think that is uh, you know well market returns drive it i think it's regulation which is clearly telling fund managers that you cannot launch anything outside thematic 
and hence uh, you know i think and maybe we will come to it at some stage there is a very big difference between sectoral funds and thematic funds so, you know today we are seeing a lot of people stuff anything and everything into thematic while uh, and then if you actually look at a, a flexi cap fund for example they'll use much of the similar words like we are chasing companies that are you know at the cutting edge have a moat have a barrier innovating now i just use the same words but i'll make innovation as my first criteria mm-hmm. and i can launch an innovative thematic fund i think my question as well earlier was sort of inclined to what you mentioned where you mentioned that thematic funds have a short life cycle because these themes only last for so long and then they're regulatory bound by either being subsuming other themes or as you said releasing paperwork by saying that okay we're not just this particular theme anymore we're broad basing our approach so do you see that affecting a lot of the newly launched nfo thematic funds that have come out maybe in 22 23 where they may be forced to do something like this so i think the challenge actually with mutual funds is uh, you know we all at the end of the day have a survivorship bias in it yeah. nobody mm-hmm. really checks which funds were in existence 15 years back and what survived so obviously the ones that survived have good returns um, but my sense is you know funds will have to start uh, relooking at some of these themes and is there a genuine reason to offer clients you know a specific theme which is going to become narrower over the next few years or you know um, like i think so if you take an example of healthcare you know maybe 5 7 years back healthcare was related only to pharma it was only to drug manufacturers and then you could do some split between generic and uh, you know branded manufacturers mm-hmm. now i think a lot of players have included uh, diagnostics they've included healthcare as a broader theme including wellness right you know so you have some Uh, funds trying to now make it into a much broader thing. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess if you were a fund manager, you would want a wider universe to pick from. We are we picking from fourteen, fifteen companies uh, because there's always going to be a time where those fourteen, fifteen companies are no longer as attractive as you would like to be. And I think we're seeing it across sectors. You know, banking used to be banking, and now we've added in. so much on the fsi is part of it right uh, in terms of uh, you know players such as mutual fund companies itself you've added in registrars you've added in uh, fintechs so uh, i think you know going forward uh, you know funds will have to slightly broad base what that theme is or that sector is because it's going to be very tough to create alpha at a later stage uh, right by just picking seven or eight names today because they are hot you know it, it may make sense but eventually my guess is uh, you will see them slightly become wider in their remit that happens with a lot of like even the defense fund launches that happened recently right um, you hardly got a pure play defense fund uh, i mean defense play in more than say 10 companies in the listed space right now yeah then you are either investing in uh, indirect second degree third degree beneficiaries or you end up investing in companies which sort of you lose the point on where probably defense is 2% of revenue yeah. but just because they add defense on their home page it sounds a little sexy and you say that hey ye bhi qualify ho gaya correct uh, using the point and that's what's clearly happened i mean defense is still a new theme when it comes to like thematic funds uh, in india mm-hmm. uh, but that's happened a lot in say esg funds where esg right. investing has lost its point because one it is subjective second um, you are heavily reliant on some source of rating agency every rating agency has a different methodology so you are sort of trying to standardize and fit yourself into some parameters and in that process even very heavily dependent say some combustion uh, energy player will also come into play as a esg player so i think that eventually either results in if you don't change the theme it just results in misplacement of allocation uh, in the theme at some point in time also the perfect example of this was that hdfc defense fund i mean they have their top holding as an lnt for like 3 4 months but lnt only has like 3 4% of the revenue coming from defense so it just doesn't make sense looking at that <laughs> no, exactly staying on that same fund i think see when they launched it um, you know i think it raised 1000 odd crores 
and very quickly they realized that you know the investable universe yeah. is not that big enough to absorb so they quickly moved yeah. to an sip only mode yeah. and did not want further inflows so i think you know my sense is thematics have a role to play for investors uh, mm. but you know again um, the general consensus amongst most people would be you know you keep it to 10 15% of your portfolio if and only if you understand what bets you're willing to take or you know uh, you know rely more on broader mandates broader diversified funds to kind of create the core wealth creation part of it because you don't want to be tied down unless there is a real compulsion which again i don't see for retail investors but yeah maybe there are um, you know private trust companies which have a mandate you know not to invest in something or to only invest in certain uh, sectors or themes right for those kind of uh, let's say hni sophisticated investors maybe thematics could be a larger part of what they do but i think uh, you know for people just looking to get equity exposure and create wealth uh, you would be better off cuz thematic also you know need a little more active monitoring unlike right. you know, a diversified fund which is uh, potentially buy and forget for a while because you're leaving it and again this could be an index it could be an active fund but you don't really need to worry what's happening with that uh, theme like i mean like if you take an example of clean energy um, you know there was a phase where everyone was rushing into clean energy and, and as mm-hmm. sagar mentioned as long as you write the word clean and energy on your home page you tend to qualify to be a clean energy company but no one really dug into what is it that you're doing in the clean energy space um, and and soon companies will be you know caught right seeing advertising i'm part of clean energy i'm part of whatever uh, and when you dig it and i mean any research analyst who digs into it will realize this company doesn't really fit that thing yeah but surprisingly on your point uh, the european market seems to have been uh, quite mature on this um, when it comes to retail investors so uh, there again data points out that more than 50% of um, the investing in thematic uh, is towards uh diversified themes which are actively managed so they don't invest in say a clean energy or um whatever ev uh, or pick out a theme like that but uh, a fund manager would say that this is a thematic fund but the theme selection and entry and exit and evaluation are again uh, at the discretion of the fund manager uh, so i think that's a blend of uh, active management and diversified and flexi cap and thematic at some level uh, where you're not completely taking away uh, manager discretion uh, but you're also sort of giving it a thematic turn uh, which seems like a much more prudent approach than uh, trying to time the theme yourself because themes also have a cycle right uh, yeah. if you enter something at maturity uh, that theme is not going to play out as you said it's either going to submerge into something else or it's just not going to give you returns um, so at the end of it i think there is some manager discretion required at that point as well if you can't do it yourself uh, right. and as as the market probably matures you might just see an evolution of the space wherein uh, there are products introduced which uh, say that we'll invest in themes uh, but let us do that job or pick up slightly broader themes and say that we are a, that actually becomes a tech fund then if you kind of take it back and say that i'll invest in anything tech that becomes a tech fund right <laughs> so that's mm-hmm. and see that i think is honestly the challenge today with this right see today you know you take innovation as a buzzword everyone's innovating a pharma company is innovating yeah. a paint company is innovating a defense company is innovating so uh, i think you know we have to split it up into there's always a need to raise funds and you know get more assets um there's also the investor who wants to jump into uh you know stuff which has got a recent track record and the market's always going to be efficient and cater to that demand supply equation uh eventually you know um, some of these investors are going to be questioning why did they do this uh, and obviously you know funds but to your point you know there are a couple of funds today in india which play this actively ch- changing their theme for example if you take the icici you know Uh, thematic fund that fund has a subset of you know feeder funds in it which they keep changing basis you know where what themes they want to play um, but again you know i think uh, some of it comes with two levels of cost uh, taxation wise mm-hmm. they look more like a debt fund rather than an equity fund but yeah. eventually i think uh, you know whether it's active or passive it's going to boil down to fund manager skill 
in identifying and being relatively early into some of these themes because that's where the big return comes from and not you know once it's fully identified and it's clustered all over the news right you want to come into defense probably 3 6 months before everybody talks defense not uh, you know once everything's run up and yeah. then so there's a saying obviously a lot of the thematic funds that come out is probably you know you miss the first 30 40% of that rally right because yeah it's only once it's popular do uh, people start creating a product around it uh, and hence you know it is tough to uh, correctly time your in and out of teams and sectors as a whole so what are your top 3 suggestions for someone who wants to engage in thematic investing now that maybe across products they just come with an idea saying that hey i like this theme PSU banking as a theme I like. How do yeah. I get exposure to it? So, what is your usual? I I would say is the the first one is really to ensure you have at least a core part of the portfolio which is diversified and is you know a genuinely long term buy and forget kind of a thing. Because there's going to be an overlap. Just as you know, the four of us in this room might say, "Wow, this looks like an attractive theme." EA fund manager is also you know going to be reading that similar information and having a guess. So, for example, uh, if I think today IT is a really good theme to play, uh, mm. so do five other fund managers, and hence, uh, you know, not taking any specific name, but some flexi cap has already moved to seven percent IT exposure in their scheme. So you want to ensure that you know you're not overly betting on themes. So uh, if you are, you know, actively using funds, you know, my sense is let seventy eighty percent of your money remain there for the stuff that you want to. you know bet on or you know do a calculated thing you know you need to really look at three four things one do you understand what is driving that theme and is it sustainable how would i do it is if i either work in it or i know somebody in that space to say it is happening right so if you take crypto as an example not that you know people should do crypto but a lot of the tech people in crypto understood what was happening what that blockchain meant what right. was being built around defi etc right Uh, and hence they got in early they understood what it was and maybe they cashed out when you know whatever board apes became popular my point is you know if you know it if you work in pharma today and you genuinely see cdmo picking up or you see okay this new you know bio insulin is going to work and who are the players that's a really good way to play teams with conviction two is to you know then look at where is you know people generally you know moving portfolios to and it could be even very simple stuff like uh, i just use it as an example my again simple thesis on it remains if we talk about you know 4 trillion 10 trillion 15 trillion indian economy it cannot be at the expense of it right, uh, right. You no know, i don't think uh, manufacturing pharma etc can replace it in the next 2 3 years it will become big you know pli plus 1 and all of that are definitely growth levers but can't be at the expense that the entire city of bangalore shuts down and you know we all become manufacturing led there right um, so given that you know if you have a again a simple thesis behind something you can play a thematic around it and themes you have to go a little wider rather than betting one company in that theme you know this is by the hashtag probably try uh, and coming to how you do it i think you know that's where you'd probably want to look a little outside the mf space as well so there's a lot of uh, you know baskets people doing it creating stocks which are you know playing on a certain theme that's maybe you know a slightly prudent way to play it with a we uh, only relying on mutual funds but again with the risk being you know you got to get in and out at the right time with a we uh, a fund where you know you hopefully a fund manager is uh, doing it having said all of it i think you know again uh, i think leave theme picking to either people who are really good at it or just you know let your fund manager run a, a broadly diversified portfolio who will identify theme and who will you know want to move out of uh, you know companies that have let's say no longer in fashion obviously big size ships can't turn overnight so you won't find a large flexi cap fund suddenly you know become a fund with 30% holding an it but even within their little uh, you know leeway that they get Uh, you will see a lot of good active fund managers move in and out of theme, and the same with sectors. I think you know, which is using theme and sector similarly. So you know, whether it's metal, pharma, etc., you know, the flexibility to move in and out is maintained uh, in a diversified fund. 
but otherwise picking stocks is a better way to play themes with your own conviction uh, yeah. or you know borrowed conviction of a platform which is which does this so it's interesting that all fund managers do actively think about these things right uh, whatever the mandate of the fund is whether it is a market cap focus fund whether it is a bottom up fund whether it is a value fund growth fund i think every fund manager has this at the back of the mind ki what themes are on what themes are relevant how do i generate the maximum alpha out of the constraints that i have within my fund uh, objectives um so everyone's taking a thematic call at some level um so you uh, i think the popularity of thematic investing is just that the investor gets a sort of perceived say in what is happening uh but otherwise even by investing in an equity mutual fund irrespective of the category they are exposing themselves to latest themes because the fund manager is doing it for them correct so i think it's that um is the greed honestly more than anything else because if you know if i were to put 100 into a diversified fund you know i would and at the end of the year say expect 15% but if i were to put 100 into a thematic fund and my pick was right then i won't be at 115 i'll probably be at 160 right and that's what's driving people to bet on themes without realizing that that 100 could even go down all the way to 80 uh, you know fall down by 80% and we've seen large companies you know once the market changes in terms of we no longer like a particular theme or it's no longer fashionable uh, there's a lot of capital which is lost we have a diversified fund where you know you're not going to see that sharp a drawdown in your portfolio but yeah, i think eventually everyone's coming into equity to try and you know create some return so while a fund manager may be benchmarked to you know a nifty or a sensex but they're trying to beat in, you know by 1 2% in the constraints that they have so clearly the way is to find what is the next driver of the market you know okay defense ho gaya what is next you know once that's over what is next Uh, but yeah, given size of portfolios, given you know regulations, they may not be able to do 40% in a theme or a sector. Uh, their mandate tells them that you know they've got to max 25% in a sector. So these are constraints, but actually you can also view it as these are good guardrails to have for people who are exactly. serious about long-term investing. You know, mm-hmm. uh, if it is short-term, then definitely thematic. So it's a bit of you know T20 versus Test match. Yeah. There are even in a Test match, you do need to. bring on your t20 game once in a while but you yeah. play a five day match constantly on t20 mode and uh, hope that you are so correct each team that you will jump in and out uh, correctly uh, is a big risk in my view correctly at the right time yes. which is correctly right time yes <laughs> yeah it will also be interesting to see about the outflow when the tide will turn because we haven't seen a major correction in like last 3 years all the themes which have been run up so it will the outflow will i think uh, logically it also sounds good if the uh, outflow is also from these themes only just like how the inflow was that will be because i think mm-hmm. uh, a lot of the money is also come in probably as i said after quite a bit of that return is so you know we talk about in the mutual fund world this whole investor gap right the product gives 18% the investor comes and says but i only got 9% where did the gap go <laughs> it's their behavior in between right you know yeah. they came in at the right, right. uh Wrong you know some of so there are some mutual funds today which um while they may launch thematic funds they also tell people that you were to sip through it you were to mm-hmm. you know keep putting sure. money into this theme for a while to see the mm-hmm. benefit and not suddenly just come at nfo time with a 1 crore check and yeah then just disappear So uh, I think it's a two-way street. You've got to manage your expectations with themes as well. Funds, you know, are also driven by what money suddenly comes in and out. Um, so I don't really uh, think it's an easy job being a fund manager as well when you suddenly get, you know, five hundred crores to say, yeah, put it in a theme. You know, valuations have to support uh, what you want to buy. Yeah. Valuations and uh, this thing, number of stocks and. Um, how to stick to the theme and not dilute it i think the larger challenge also is for like i mean even i've been on the other side where managing a fund and uh, if you want to take exposure to a mid cap or a small cap company and you have a large corpus you just can't do it without an impact cost exactly. uh, so those constraints sort of become larger with uh, more money coming in so sometimes you just like i'm better off managing lesser money because that's so much easier to like uh, deliver on <laughs> 
No, I think along with that, it's also sometimes you know, uh, how much ever you want to re- remain in control, it's the eventual end investor, right? I mean, I think they are driven more by gear, you know, greed and fear rather than anything. So you know, there's nothing structurally wrong in so many sectors, but you'll see people rush out of it, which either forces you to sell at distressed prices or the reverse, you know, when inflows come. So it it is tough, you know, being successful uh, on a long term basis with thematic. But having said it, you know, I think the emotional side of investing, everybody wants to participate in quick returns. So I personally would say, you know, having five ten percent exposure to themes you're convinced on or you believe as a future uh, is, may, you know, maybe a good way to play it because you don't hurt the remaining eighty ninety percent of the portfolio. Right. So you know, it's about giving. In at times, and not you know trying to say everything has to be run as deep value diversified mm-hmm. equity, right? I mean that's not going to work. Somebody does want to uh, take a bet, so finding that balance is, I think, a you know an easier way to ensure that thematic investing is also part of your portfolio, but you're not risking, let's say, the core part of it, which continues to participate in a broader equity, you know, growth. It's well put that you said that there's greed and fear, and we've already seen the greed aspect take over with <clears throat> the immense flows that we've seen as of December. But do you see the fear also setting in on a more ground level? See, not really. I think uh, again, uh, the fear is obviously very difficult to predict and how people right. will react. I know a lot of investors today are still first-time investors uh, right. in this market, um, and then they, they benefited from you know the secular trend since COVID, right? Uh, but having said it, see, you know, we all are in a comparative game. Uh, the moment, you know, your friend says, hey, I only lost 6% and you lost 8%, you may be tempted to cut your losses any further and get out. Um, so given that, I think there will be a correction. Um, see, I'm more in the camp rather than trying to predict whether that's this year, next year, pre-election, post-election. Uh, it's easier to stay invested if you know that it is broadly diversified because as a whole, uh, I don't see, you know, any index, let's say the Sensex coming down to 45,000, right? Directionally, that's less chances than it going to 80,000. So between these two, I'd rather stay invested. Uh, I am a big fan of active funds simply because I say leave it to a fund manager. There is always value in some parts, right? If there is a crash in defense, for example, something else looks attractive. So you're better off to be in equity as a whole and let it grow versus, uh, you know, being very focused and say, I'll only have a sector in my portfolio uh, because that is going to go out of fashion at some point of time. Just don't know when, but, uh, and once it happens, you know, everyone then jumps in saying it was a given. And I mean, if you take an HDFC bank example, Today, everyone's like, oh, it's a given. We knew it, you know, three months back. It was too big. But, you know, it didn't happen for so long, right? I mean, again, I, yeah. I don't know yeah. the the exact numbers behind that company and what earnings it reported. My sense is easier to, you know, stay invested with diversified funds. Um, mm-hmm. Eventually, even I think a lot of the data shows sectoral funds, thematic funds on a five, ten year basis don't add any extra alpha. In fact, they're lower than uh, a diversified fund. So if I'm anyway inclined to hold something for 10 years, I'd rather get into the right product at the start than keep switching every so often. Great. Chaitanya, any questions? Just to add to what you said, there was a recently interesting tweet I just saw earlier this tweet today. It was about Mr. Tandon, who is the CEO of Quant AMC. He, yeah. he said that uh, a retail investor are also being smart because whenever in the last six months the market has fallen, the equity uh, inflow in the asset which he was managing, it was increased. So uh, do you see this trend to continue or this will result into something like people buying overvalued things or as well? Because whenever they see a fall, they quickly jump into and buy. Yeah, we've been yeah, seeing the no. data in terms of inflow, whenever the markets fall, uh, there are two kinds of investors we see. The existing ones who rush to book profits. There are some okay. of that out as well. Within our basket, they'll be like, 
चलो थर्टी परसेंट मिल गया एग्जिट एंड देर इज न्यू सेट ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स विच ऑल्सो कम्स इन लुकिंग एट द पास्ट रिटर्न बिकॉज अगेन लाइक फॉर अस इज वेल एंड बिकॉज द इन्वेस्टिंग सिनारियो इज सो टेक ड्रिवन नाउ uh returns have turned out to be the largest determinant of whether a person is going to invest or not so they see our two three year returns they see chalo they've beaten the benchmark by a healthy number invest so overall we've been seeing irrespective of whether the markets are up or down we've been seeing inflows so definitely i think um, uh, not a lot of people exiting or panicking when the markets fall because i think directionally also the narrative is pretty clear you yeah. are as you said uh, 80000 is more of a probability than uh, 40000 and i think so which is what i think you know everybody here today agrees on it it's you know just accepting that you know there is a great future by being invested but i think you know the challenge is for a lot of people is stomaching that little 10 20% volatility if you say it is natural you take it but see i think in this space there are always someone who comes and says i can still get you the entire upside without the downside right uh, and then there are people who you know the equity by nature has to give you both upside and downside you just increase your holding period and your chances of upside go up significantly and that i think is the challenge if you're doing a one year you know forward type of investing then your outcome could be wildly different But if you are genuinely a five plus year investor, you struggle to lose money in equity, unless again you do something really stupid and you know buy some company with hindsight. So diversification and some eye on entry well, entry kind of amount and valuation um, is and both of these are in your hands technically, right? You don't really need to worry about um, big government policies, etc. interesting conversation i think for all retailers who end up on this video at some point i think a lot of yeah. insight has been shared from the supply side of it where themes are difficult to pick and on the demand side of it when themes are difficult to enter at the right time and exit out of at the right time but hopefully the retail investor watching this would be well aware and of course just as a reminder again none of what we've spoken over the past 45 minutes has been investment advice or advice in any way and all of this is just educational and, and entertainment in terms of just gaining knowledge and that's yeah. about it thank you so much for this conversation though i think a lot of insights been shared on the entire topic that's been in the news reel for a while and we'd love to know a little bit more about how fiscal fitness works and what that entails uh yeah very quickly i think you know i uh, think honestly just visit the website fiscal fitness or in see what i have to say about how i help individuals uh the idea is very simple you know uh you have one big project in your life which is managing you know your goals and getting there so if you need help you know reach out and take help do not fall into the trap that you know all of this can be done on your own um and hence uh, you know use the services of professionals if it is investing you know use a platform which helps you pick stocks if it is mutual funds use mutual funds uh, there's nothing wrong in taking help right i mean think of it as doing heart surgery you wouldn't want to really listen to three random youtube videos and try and do it on your own and the other bit i just add is um, you know this is genuinely you know a major impact on your life you know while you may you know if your audience kind of listening today is thinking at 25 30 I don't really need to worry about. Pretty soon, you know, 65 when you retire, you got another 30 years, and your money needs to last you, uh, right? Uh, and hence, uh, your actual investing horizon is not one year, two year, right? It is maybe even 50 years for some of the right. people listening here. So you know, and just again, you know, do very simple math. If you can compound money even at 12% for 50 years, you're going to do phenomenally well at it. So just right. keep that in mind when you look at equities. It's not Yes, play T20 once in a while, but one eye has to be on test because that's where you are playing. You are playing a 50-year life. Uh, so use a professional, use you know services which help you pick stocks, baskets. Uh, there is nothing wrong, and there is no need for everybody to become DIYers as far as investing goes. Absolutely, and I think for our viewers, it's great to know that this option exists. 
we'll definitely keep the link for physical fitness in the description below for them to check it out if you need a personalized little bit more of a human touch then kartik's your man and if you need a website and more digital approach then go ahead to repeating.com and check out all that we do thank you so much for making this happen and i'm hoping that we'll speak to you soon on yet another interesting topic sure it's been amazing you know uh, and a lot of research gone into pulling out some data points fascinating you know the way you all take this seriously so well done and you know we'll be in touch definitely thank you so much and stay tuned for the next episode everyone and that's a wrap for this week <laughs>